abstract reasoning was my strongest section in this exam i actually scored 860 like i was so happy with it so i'm just gonna get right into it with the tips and tricks hey it's issy the medic welcome to part two of how i scored in the top nine percent in the ucat and if you've not watched part one already please click in the suggestion box i think it's somewhere here and the video should come up i'll give you guys a moment to watch it and come back so let's get right into it. Today, I'm going to be giving a few tips and tricks for abstract reasoning, situational judgment, and I'm going to be giving you guys some key advice for test day. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. And please comment below if you have any further questions. And if there's anything you want me to go through further, let's get started. Abstract reasoning was my strongest section in this exam. I actually scored 860. Like, I was so happy with it. So I'm just gonna get right into it with the tips and tricks. A little bit about this section before I get started is that there are four question types, but regardless of the question type, when you get the technique, when you improve your technique to pattern spot, it helps you with all the question types, if you get what I mean. So yeah, I just wanted to you know say that before I get into the tips and tricks. I'm telling you, using the scans mnemonic is so vital. Like this is a very, very good starting point that you can build up on when you are revising. So the S stands for shape. And this basically means what shape is in the box? What shape is in set A? What shape is in set B? What shape is in the series? And then what kind of shape is it? Is it a curved shape? Is it a straight edged shape? Is it, you know, is it a four sided shape? Is it a three sided shape? So yeah, like that's what the S stands for. Color. What colour is the shape? Is the shape black or white? Does the shape have certain patterns in it? Are the colours alternating in a certain set? Um, where is that, you know, shape of a certain colour? Is, is that certain colour in one part of the shape? So yeah, it, it's just building up on that. A is arrangement. So where are certain shapes in relation to each other in the box? Uh, is something pointing upwards? Is an arrow pointing downwards? Is the, is the arrow pointing towards something? Um, are there certain colour shapes in a certain area of that box? You know, those sort of things. Yeah, so think of how things are in the box in relation to other things, in relation to other shapes. Number. How many shapes are in one set? How many shapes are in the other set? Number of lines of symmetry. Are there an odd number of shapes? Are there an even number of shapes? Are there an even number of sides? Are there an odd number of sides? Are there a prime number of sides? How many right angles are there? How many curved shapes are there? How many shapes are black? How many shapes are white? Literally, like, it, it gets as deep as that. How many things can you literally number? So you just train your eye to see those things. Size. How big are the shapes? Is there a small shape of a certain colour in that set? Is there a shape that's big in a certain corner of that box? So just looking at, you know, how big a certain shape is or how big something is in relation to another. Important. And then what I did was that I went through things like in order. So I'd start literally from shape and then go downwards. So if I didn't find there was a pattern in shape, I'd then go down to number and so on and so forth. This made it so much more structured for me. And before I knew it, I was doing these things automatically whilst I was practicing. And I didn't have to like look at my mnemonic. It's something I just did. And sometimes not even in order because your eye's been trained. Write down every pattern you see. When I did this, it literally stuck the patterns in my head. And this is something I'd never done previously when I was practicing. And the thing is, you kind of have a log that you can refer back to and look at and be like, OK, yeah, there's a pattern I'm spotting here. There's a pattern I'm spotting here. So it kind of like stayed in my head. I highly recommend it. Jot it down in a notebook. Find the simplest box. That may be the one with the least number of shapes or the least number of squiggles, and then compare it to two other box in that boxes in that set. And like if you see a similar pattern from the simplest box compared to the other two boxes in that set, it's very likely that that's the pattern. So yeah, don't try and like, you know, give yourself too much work by going to a box that's complicated. There's no point. Because essentially, even at the simplest box, the pattern is there. You just have to compare it to the other one 
other boxes in that set. Honestly, they love to throw distractors in the abstract reasoning section. What I advise is writing down the distractors in your notebook so you have like a log of what the distractors are. And then after a while, you'd actually be able to kind of pick up when you're looking at like the boxes, what distractors are. So yeah, it's important because you don't want to get thrown off by those in the exam. Also, beware of conditional patterns. Like these are when a of something being present in a box is dependent on something else. For example, having an arrow in a box uh, means that you have a prime number of shapes in that box. Yeah, those can be really hard to spot. So even if you're struggling and you spot half a pattern and not a full pattern, just go with it, answer and move on because you don't have much time in the exam. Before we get on to the rest of the video, guys, I have an important question. Have you liked and subscribed yet? Seriously, I'd really appreciate the support um, because, you know, it takes a lot of work to put these videos together. Before any more time goes by, let's get on with it. I'm now going to go through a few tips for the situational judgment test. I scored a band two in this section and I was really happy with it. Not going to waste any more of your time now. Let's get started. Read the GMC's Guide to Good Medical Practice. Honestly, this shape the way I looked at the scenarios. And also you need to know how to be a good doctor when you go into practice anyway. So you might as well start now. And yeah, it just like, it helped me with this section a lot. So it talks about how to treat patients, how to treat your colleagues, confidentiality, like empathy, those sort of things. It, it literally tells you how to be a good doctor. So yeah, I recommend it. Highly recommend you go and read that. In this section, you have to basically say whether something is important or not in relation to a scenario or whether something is appropriate or not in relation to a scenario. So when it came to approaching this section, I just picked a side. So, for instance, was this action appropriate or not? Let's say it was appropriate. Okay, so now... I know it's appropriate, but is it very appropriate or appropriate, but not ideal? Then depending on how I was feeling about it, I'd pick one. But if I was unsure, I'd go for the most extreme. The thing is, you do not want to be stuck in between B and C because these are on opposite sides. So what I say is, first of all, just pick which side you're on and then look at it a bit deeper and then pick where you are within that side. Read the scenario properly and make sure you fully understand it. Like, don't try and rush to answer the questions before understanding the scenario because you could totally miss the point. So just be very careful with that. Also, do not overthink it. Trust your gut with this section. The thing is, when I prepared, like when I started preparing and then I go with my gut feeling and I got it wrong, I'd like look at it and go back and investigate, okay, why am I wrong? And I'd learn from this. And it gets to a point where, you know, it becomes like innate that you start sort of going with the right thing based on what you've done before. So as long as you've been learning from your mistakes and you've been training yourself, your gut feeling should be at least on the correct side of the argument if you get what I mean. So do you take a mock the day before the test or not? Personally, I took a mock the night before after work and it just made me panic. So my advice is, if you're going to take a mock the day before, do it earlier on in the day. And if you're not going to take a mock, do a few questions and then stop before the evening arrives and give yourself the evening off, relax, the last thing you want to do is cram and get yourself all worked up. You've prepared, you've done well, just make sure that you're well rested before the exam. You do not want to overload your brain with too much information. Now, I'm just going to give you a few quick tips for testing. Use the keyboard shortcuts during the exam. Um, I'm going to pop them up somewhere here. So yeah, you should definitely practice how to use these during your prep. These will save you so much time in the exam, I'm telling you. Do not get bogged down on those really, really hard questions that are taking lots of time in the exam. Don't forget to flag, skip and come back to those at the end of the section. I know it's difficult, 
But just remember in the exam that every question is worth the same. If you're spending so long on one, remember, okay, this one's really hard, but there's going to be easier questions coming up ahead. Also, do not panic. Try not to panic. I know it's really difficult, especially if the UCAT is something that you struggle with. But just remember that you have prepared and you've put the work in. And also, find a, like a relaxation technique that works for you. For me, it's pep talking myself and doing breathing techniques at the desk before I start. If it's meditating that morning, just doing something to like calm you down um, because panicking can really affect your score in this exam, especially because it's so time pressured. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it and I hope you found it useful. If you have, do not forget to like and subscribe. And also, please drop a comment below if you have any feedback or if there's any questions you want to ask me. Honestly, guys, all the best with your UCATs. Go and smash it. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.